Right, we are in the sunny hills of Monmouth where I've just finished a four bed rewire. I thought I'd give you a quick walk around. So I have fitted a triple stacker, which you may think, why have you done that? <laughs> That's so over the top. Let me break it down for you and hopefully you'll see why I've installed a triple stacker. So the client has got off and on peak uh, a supply. So he's got off peak heaters. And as you know, I think there is a, a requirement now when you have off peak heaters or certainly the newer storage heaters, they have an on peak supply to them where they have a like a, a supplementary heater uh, and supply convection heater at the bottom. So I could have done a board for the house, a board for the on-peak um, heaters, and a board for the off-peak heaters. I just thought it'd be a lot neater to just do it in one big triple stacker, which I just ripped the guts apart and arranged it to suit the, the installation. Let me know what you would have done. Drop it in the comments if you'd have gone three separate boards or one big one like this. To me, this seems like the more logical way of doing things, but there are a thousand ways to skin a cat. So, on the top row, on Peak DB, I've done, again, dedicated radials. I've done a radial for the kitchen sockets, downstairs sockets, um, and then the on peak, on peak supply to all the heaters. I'll show you the heaters. The client is keeping the old storage heaters. So this is to future proof. If or when they replace the old heaters with new ones, they'll need an on peak supply. Uh, and also future proofing for the next client or when they sell or if they sell, they've got the, the infrastructure there for them. So the rest of these are all on peak heaters. We've got a type one, two and three surge protective device. It's a overhead supply supplying this installation. I've loaded it with my caution fire suppression device within. I've got three fire suppression devices located above the row, each row of RCBOs. I've labeled the water protective bonding where it is. So this is the on-peak stuff. Again, staying with the on-peak supply. Um, the client has got a dedicated radio. He's a bit of a lighting engineer, so he wants to be able to work. And if he does something wrong, he won't trip out the rest of the house. So there's a dedicated socket, so a dedicated radio for a, and it's red. So the client uh, can differentiate between the house sockets and this dedicated socket he can play about with. Um, dedicated socket for that upstairs sockets oven sockets there's a future oven supply i have labeled it but behind that blank is a six mil because they're relocating the oven to the center of the kitchen they're in they're doing some major refurbishment work so that's why i've i've, I've future proofed some parts of the installation but that will be done at a later date we've got the lights upstairs and outside there's a reason i've done that the reason being that well, there's two reasons. One reason being that if there's a problem with the downstairs lights, to get to the house to the fuse board, this is in the garage, by the way, at least the outside lights will come on so they can see themselves around the perimeter of the house before getting to the garage. And the second reason is there's a lot less um, points on the upstairs circuit than there are on the downstairs. The downstairs, there's something like 30 odd points with the down lights and stuff. So with the upstairs, I think there's only about seven. So the chances of that tripping is a lot less. So that's why I put the outside lights on with the upstairs. Let me know in the comments below what you would do. Lights on the ground floor, there's utility sockets. So I've got a dedicated radio for the utility. I'll show you that. Pump and solar. There's, so there's a solar um, switch up in the loft and a pump for the immersion heater. A solar thermal supply. There's an immersion heater, just a three kilowatt immersion heater. Smoke detectors, I've done three. There's a future solar, so behind there is a six mil um, PV supply up into the loft, but it's just isolated and it's not actually connected into the RCBO. It's just there, ready for the client when they get round to it. There's also a dedicated radial for the garage, which we're in now, which also via a fuse connection unit does the lights. So there, that's, well, that's 30 ways. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spare, spares for the client to either make any more make any additions or alterations so i could have also done a double stacker and a single one for the off peak but i thought i would just get a triple stacker and then on the bottom here we've got the off peak um supply with all the heaters there's seven storage heaters throughout the four bed property and they're all there there's a blank in between each one because i was able to do it for thermal derating check it out read up about it if you don't know about thermal derating 
I tried to do it as much as I could here, but obviously with the amount of ways I couldn't really evenly space them all out. But if you can, try and space out the RCBOs. And that is the off-peak supply. So there's our DB, there's our off-peak meter, there's our on-peak meter. Replace the tails. So in the garage, it's all in conduit work. Let me let me head out the garage, I'll show you. I've done an emergency light. So in case there's a power outage, the clients can come into the garage and this light will kick off. Let's find out which one it's on. I believe it's on this one. So for example, if the power did go on, this emergency light would come on and they can at least see, have ascertain what the issue is, if it's a supply problem, if there's a problem somewhere else. I tend to fit them, not on every job, but I do tend to fit them, especially in places underneath the, um, underneath the stairs or in garages. It's more appropriate. I wouldn't fit it in someone's hallway or anything like that if it was on show, but somewhere like under the stairs or in a garage, it seems very appropriate, uh, in my opinion. So it's the little things, I think, that go the extra mile, in my opinion. Um, through here, it's a bit of a spicy ceiling. I don't know if you noticed. It's hence why I've done all conduit surface work. I've got sockets on both sides and a light switch. Let's head on out round. We've got some floodlights, whisker boxes. We've got a couple of outdoor sockets. Another floodlight here. Again, a bit of a spicy ceiling here. So we've done straight surface conduit and it's it's two-way intermediate and a two-way with that side. But in here, the client has got a dedicated radial just for in here where he's gonna have his washing machine, fridge, freezer, um, with the, I have labeled some of the areas. So this DB1 circuit 22. I've labeled some of the circuits, not the things that are on show, like in the kitchen or in the lounge or the kind of obvious sockets. I've done things like the immersion heater, the um, uh, pump, the, dedicated radial for that, that red socket in that in that room, which I'll show you. Some of the uh, underfloor heating spurs that are tucked away in the loft. I've, I've labelled them so the client can see and find out if anything trips or needs to isolate them because I I think the client is a bit of a enthusiastic DIY when it comes to electric, so he may have a little tinker. It's concrete floors again on this rewire. So everything was chased from above and I have bonded. Don't look too close. I'm not an expert, but I've all I've bonded all the chases as well. We've got two ways here. Follow me in. Smokes, one upstairs, landing hallway, kitchen, and in the garage. It's not a requirement, but I like to. When there's a garage attached to the building, I like to put a smoke in it. If it's detached, I don't, I'm not really too fussed. But when it's attached, I feel it's nice or appropriate to fit a smoke in that in the garage. This wall is being studded out, hence why these cables are surface. This is my main run of cables that run from the loft above me down and then straight back to back into the garage. So I've encapsulated them in a bit of trunking, it looks a bit neater, even though the client is going to be insulating and boarding this wall. Red socket that I was telling you about, so the client can mess about and um, he does a lot of lighting stuff, so he, he, he will be messing around with lights and if he trips it, he doesn't want to trip the whole house. So there's his red socket, so he can mess about with that. I've ran some Cat6 cabling, for uh, future proofing, the client doesn't currently doesn't have internet or anything like that, but they plan on doing uh, in the future if they do sell, they do want to have the ability to have internet telly or uh, an access point down here. I'll show you where the incoming supply phone spy is, so where the router will be. A couple of USB sockets, and again, night storage heater. And these storage heaters are very old, and on purpose, I installed. I can see them here. Ah, there it is. So on purpose, there you can see that, I installed these blue click flow plugs. They're 20 amps rated, but I did that on purpose. I didn't I didn't want to go into these. They're, it's highly likely that these old storage heaters contain asbestos. So I didn't want to go messing about with them and rewiring them. So I cut off the flexes to each of them and I installed those 20 amp click flow plugs so that the client can remove them, dispose of them, or someone else can do that. Or when they get new ones, they can plug them in and wire them in directly. But I didn't want to mess about with them. I don't want to touch them because they're full of asbestos, some of the older ones. A few spotlights, heat detector, future extractor fan supply, 
new cooker supply. There's a future oven supply here, which is ran in the zone by this light switch. Always keeping in the zones. So there's the light switch supplies there, and there's the six modes on the left, but it's within the zone of that light switch. Carries on down, chased into the floor, and there's a loop of six mil there for the client when they relocate the oven. I'll take you upstairs. A bit more awkward upstairs. We had the eaves to run in um, the, full, the full length of the house, but that actually didn't make it as easy as, as I thought it was going to be. It was actually quite challenging getting the cables from the eaves inwards, but got it done. Here's our incoming phone supply. Phone supply, and I've done that Cat 6 that you saw in the lounge. The other end of it is here. So when they get a little router, plug it in, plug the phone into the router, Cat 6 from here down to the telly or whatever, or an access point. I cut in a, I'll post some pictures, but I cut in a access to the eaves so we can run our cabling. All the patches have been filled in, as you can see, all our patches filled back in for running our cables up through the stud walls. Another storage heater coming in here. We've got light switch and light in this cupboard with the immersion heater supply, a dedicated 20 amp radio immersion heater supply. Um, we've got a pump circuit on the immersion here and there's also this uh, thermal solar uh, that they're going to wire in at some point in the future. But these are all dedicated radials from the board. So this, this rewire has taken me eight days. I was here for five days. On four of those days, there was three and a half of us. And then this second week now, I've been here for three days. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, doing all the surface conduit. There's like outdoor sockets, doing all the patching up, doing all the bonding. I think that's a fair going. Let me know in the comments below what you think. It's time to head on back to Bristol.